when Blind Faith played their first concert on the 7th of June 1969 in London's Hyde Park, Eric Clapton was seen with an unusual guitar. It was a hybrid instrument comprising the body of a 1964 Telecaster Custom with a 1950s maple Stratocaster neck that reputedly came from, but definitely ended up on, Brownie, the Layla guitar. Eric bought the 1956 Sunburst Strat Brownie in Sound City, London, on May the 7th, 1967. In August or September of 1967, he was photographed at the Fillmore Auditorium playing a Sunburst Strat with a rosewood Telecaster neck. The neck could possibly have come from the Telecaster Custom. Eric was obviously in an experimental mood at this time because he was also photographed in Sweden in February of 1968 using the Telecaster Custom body but with a rosewood Strat neck. When I made the tutorial for Hat to Cry Today, I used a Firebird and a Squire Strat. You'll find a link to that video in the description below. I wanted to get hold of a custom Telestrat for future Blind Faith videos. Fender's Custom Shop issued a very limited edition Eric Clapton Blind Faith Telecaster in 2019. Only 50 of those guitars were made available worldwide. They replicated Eric's guitar in minute detail. The retail price in the USA was just short of $12,000. For my own purposes and my budget, I decided on a Squire Classic Vibe Hybrid. I already have a 50s Classic Vibe Strat, which is a great guitar, and I've used that on a lot of videos. I'd also played a Classic Vibe Telecaster Custom in a store and really liked it. Both Telecaster Customs and 50 Stratocasters make regular appearances on eBay, so that's where I headed for a start. I bought the Custom first and then the Stratocaster. Coincidentally, the chap who was selling the Telecaster was a patron of mine on Patreon. He was kind enough to deliver the guitar in person. With both guitars in hand, I set out to do the work. First of all, I removed the necks. This was a very simple job, just removing four screws from the back plates. Taking the strat neck, I was pleased and also not surprised to see that it fitted nicely into the pocket of the Telecaster body. The problem, however, is that when I screwed it on, it was not aligned correctly. I was tempted to have a go at this myself, but I decided to get the job done professionally. I contacted the chap I'd used before, Master Luthier Cy Bailey of SMB Guitars, who is based near to me. Cy kindly took a few photographs of the work as it progressed. The first picture shows how far the strings were out of alignment when the strat neck was fitted to the telebody using the existing screw holes. In the next picture, you can see there was a big gap in the neck pocket. Here are the original screw holes in the strat neck. And just as a curious aside, the serial number puts this guitar as a 2020 model, and yet there is a date stamp of April 15. Similarly, the custom Telecaster neck had a 2020 serial number, and that was stamped with July 09. Moving on with the fitting of the strat neck, Cy needed to recite the holes in order to get the correct string alignment. To do this, he first made some dowels to fill the original holes. By taking a 3mm drill to a piece of scrap aluminium, then hammering four splints of maple through the hole, thus creating the 3mm dowels he needed. The dowels were glued into the original holes, then the new holes were marked out and drilled. With the fit of the neck now corrected, the string alignment was perfect, and the guitar was looking great. When I got the guitar home, 
I decided to tone down the high gloss poly finish in a similar fashion to my CV Strat, although not to the same degree. The back of the neck had already been very slightly sanded by the previous owner. I took up where he left off and kept going until the whole thing had a matte finish, which to me has a lot better feel. Getting to the body itself is a bit of a nerve wracking procedure because when you first attack the guitar with a scouring pad or wire wool, it produces a ton of fine white lines and white dust. Keeping going with the wire wool, however, reduces the impact of the lines. Once that was done, I used a popular automotive finishing product that cuts paintwork back to remove scratches. I didn't get them completely out, but it did calm them down. Then I used a couple of guitar specific products, a cleaner and a polish. There were only two hardware changes to the guitar. Switching the circular string tree to a square one and changing the regular bridge saddles to compensated ones. Two pretty obvious differences from Eric Clapton's guitar. Fewer screw holes on the pick guard. The addition of the mounting screws for the neck pickup to the pick guard and the lack of heavy wear on the fingerboard. But all in all, as a blind faith guitar on a budget, the guitar plays really well and I'm very pleased with it.
Thank <laughs> you. 